Hey, Foot Clan, before we get into the show, don't forget to subscribe. Click the bell so you do not miss an episode. Today, we're talking sleepers. We're going to talk about those regular draft sleepers, and then we're going to go deep. And now, we turn to the world of sports. The football season is upon us, and that means it's time to get ready for your fantasy football drafts. The ultimate draft kit from the fantasy footballers is the Cat's Pajamas, and only tool you need. The best rankings in the business. Sleepers, breakouts, values. It's even got a free companion app. Don't be a pigeon-livered foozler. The ultimate draft kit will keep you on the up and up, and keep all the hornswogglers at bay. Don't even think about entering a fantasy football draft without it. Don't be a square. Head to ultimatedraftkit.com today. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. The UDK is the top, see? <laughs> I can't believe. Oh, I know. I can't, Look, it's wild. We we have made the ultimate draft kit for... Tell me more. Five, six years. I don't, I don't remember how long. This is the long. fifth year. And somehow, they made a commercial for it. They knew it was going to happen. In the forties, uh, and they made a commercial back in the, I don't know twenties. Yeah, that was with the radio, Mike. <laughs> that, they didn't that, have stereos back then. Yeah, Just that was the radio. When the AM was yeah. was the haps. <laughs> was the top. See, absolutely no guff in this UDK. <laughs> oh, no guff at all. Wednesday, August twenty sixth, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Jason Moore, Mike, the Fantasy Hitman. Right, I'm Andy Holloway. Excited to be with you. A sleeper show today. Some camp news and notes to talk about. We've got an interesting buy sell because I, uh, I have some strong thoughts on this buy sell, and I'm curious if you guys align with me or not. But uh, we appreciate you joining us. If you are just getting ready for your draft, ultimatedraftkit.com. A dollar from every UDK goes to St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. We're partnering with them for the second year in a row, mm-hmm. and. Um, we worked with them on our live tour last year as well. We did not get to do the live tour this year for obvious reasons, but we are working Thanks, with them. Thanks, COVID. <laughs> that, was a, that was really mean. <laughs> COVID's feelings are hurt now. <laughs> oh, uh, good. Yeah, yeah, I don't have any problem with that. But uh, you can find us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. We got some, uh, I, I won't tell you what quite yet, but on Saturday, we have something very special planned. And that's it. That's all I'm going to tell you right now. Right now. Right now. Mm. But maybe maybe more tomorrow. And uh, you can find our community at jointhefoot.com. That's how you get in the Megala Bowl, the largest uh, season-long tournament in existence. Jason, uh, what is the proper way to say that? <laughs> just, just growl. Man. That's the, the, the proper pronunciation uh, is... Uh, yeah, I believe it's pronounced... <laughs> <laughs> That's, that is correct <laughs> alright let's do some buy sell buy or sell presented by pristine auction buy or sell the Patriots running back James White will outperform his current average draft position mm. which is the late 6th round running back 31 uh, he finished higher than the RB31 in three of the last four years with Tom Brady in New England. Two. What's that? Three of the last four. Oh, oh yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. sorry. I was just saying he's he's been there. And, uh, yeah, 28th in 2016, 41st in 2017, then 8th in 2018, 22nd last year. But what are you doing? You're buying or selling the fact that James White will outperform his current average draft position. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I will say this. He's a perfect name to bring up on a sleeper's show because he is certainly being, you know, you, you could say he's being disrespected from what he has done in the past. Mm-hmm. He's always the forgotten man. I, 
I forget about him in the sense that whenever we bring up the New England backfield, I, you know, Sony is, oh, he's back. Oh, he's hurt. Damian Harris, is he going to, you know, oh, Lamar Miller's coming in. Don't forget about Rex Burkhead. And I never bring up James White's name, which is not fair since he's the only guy who's been good at fantasy for the last several years. That being said, I do think that there is going to be a large downtick in receptions, which if you followed, you know, my kind of narrative about Austin Eckler, when you are a guy that the vast majority of your production comes through the air and you lose the super old statue vet that has to dump it down quickly and cannot scramble and get out of the pocket and make plays with his legs, you're going to lose some amount. That's not to say he's not utilized in a pass catching way or that Cam Newton can't use a pass catcher a la I don't know. Christian McCaffrey did pretty well. Can I can I drop some stats on you? Uh, you why don't you put them in front of me? I'll look at them. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, Cam Newton. Look out below. I because you brought up Christian McCaffrey, and I wanted to take a little look at them. We we did not identify Cam Newton as a uh, a quarterback that works with the running back. You know, the passing game that was the narrative before Christian McCaffrey arrived. Um. Newton was the 41st most accurate passer on throws between one and nine yards among quarterbacks with 100 or more attempts in the last three seasons. So he has not been what Tom Brady has been in that um, close quarters mm. range. Over the last 300 throws, he has an overthrow percentage of 13.2%. That is better than only Josh Rosen, Mason Rudolph, and Jeff Driscoll. So he has a tendency to overthrow. Look, James, James, su look Superman's too strong. Too yeah. strong. You try to dink and dunk with that arm. James White is two inches shorter than Christian McCaffrey. Uh-oh. He's got shorter arms. He's oh, got a no. low, lower career We're... catch percentage. Thank goodness I and he didn't only... put these stats right on me. And he only, <laughs> he only plays 46% of the snaps last year. So, so you're me, a buy. I'm a huge sell. Okay. <laughs> but I, I look at him the same way that you guys look at Adrian Peterson in Washington, which is you don't. Th there's no like perceived upside for you. Like there's no reason that you want to draft AP in any way, shape, or form. Even though I think he will get 200 carries, it doesn't even matter to you. To right. me, James White with Cam Newton on 46 percent of snaps represents that nebulous, just meh output. And so for me, it's a sell. Yeah, I, I'm I'm gonna buy it. I will I will buy that James White will. Outproduced the running back thirty-one. I have him projected at at running back twenty-nine right now, and that's in half point PPR. He's he's not a player you're going to look at in standard leagues. Uh, that the outrageous fantasy production you had from a couple years ago. That's not going to happen again. But I still think that you know when you're if you're loading up on wide receivers early in the draft, James White is one of those guys later on that I'm fine taking the shot on. I know the stats are there, the narratives are there, but what if the Patriots are not as good as they were last year? What if it would, you know, the defense the second half of the year, once the schedule kind of toughened up on them, the defense wasn't as elite. They had a whole bunch of opt outs. They've lost some Chung, High Tower. They've lost big some pieces on defense. Some great players. What if they're in a little bit more of a a negative game script where it can't just be whoever the the ground and pound guy is, and James White is forced back on the field, and he's on the field for 60% of the snaps. So there, I, to me, there is upside in the targets. I will say this. He is a he has his place in fantasy football, and, and you nailed it, Mike. If you're going zero RB, if you're one of those people that is stacking your team up in those early rounds at wide receiver, quarterback, and tight end, and you just need someone that can plug into your running back spot while you wait for – uh, you know, a Pollard or an Edmonds or a Madison to, to get their shot, then you grab someone in a PPR league like James White who will go in there and absolutely give you a floor that is not zero. But I am selling this. I'm I'm on Andy's side here in the sense that uh, I've got him at my as my running back 39. I think the passing volume goes down. I think the quality of passes to that position goes down as well. And uh, he wasn't a dominant force already. So uh, for those reasons combined, Shark Tank, oh. I'm out. How many targets do you guys have him down for? He goes 95 targets, 123, 72. I think he could probably get to that 80, 90 target range. I have okay. him at 73. Um, 
Seventy three would be rough, but if, but if he hits the ninety target mark, he's going to have fantasy value. You yes. said uh, if you're going zero RB, James White's a good pickup, and I think that's true also because he's basically not a running back. <laughs> he's basically like a, uh, a slot receiver of sure. sorts. I mean, sixty seven total carries last year. That monster year he had, he had ninety four carries, but five rushing touchdowns. Yeah, it that was year. outlier. So. Uh, yeah, I mean, he can definitely finish above 31, even with Cam Newton's deficiencies in that area. But I'm selling it. That was Buy Yourself from Pristine Auction. PristineAuction.com. Use the code BALLERS. Get a $10 credit towards some sweet sports memorabilia. Let's talk news. News and notes from around the league. A little pup follow-up to that James White discussion. Sonny Michelle coming off the PUP. Is it official? I know he was on the field. Uh, it's official. This is official according oh. to Judge Giamatti, who has oh placed this before my eyeballs. So now we will see if the Damian Harris drum beat and hype can withstand. Yeah. Yeah, and the, the Damian Harris hype includes some competency in the passing game from what I've read. People yeah. excited about the routes run and the, the way that he's playing in that area of the game. That's why he's more interesting. Yeah, I've, I've, Sony. Like for some people, Sony Michelle's back. Okay, I've, I'm completely moving on from Damian Harris. I'm not going to completely move on at this point from the news. It's been so positive uh, about Damian Harris. He, I, the odds are against him when some when someone's a third round pick and they do absolutely nothing in their rookie year, but they're healthy. The odds are against that player. But the reports have been just so positive. Let's see how healthy Sony Michelle actually is. We got to stay water and be ready to move Damian Harris out of that sleeper range. But I'm just saying, I'm not doing that. I'm not taking that action immediately. If you want to know where people are with Sony Michelle, I've I've gotten messages on Twitter saying, "Do you think I should take him in the 18th round?" That's the kind of message wow. that somebody like, look, 247 carries for Sony Michelle last year. And from what I can tell, destroyed every single person that uh, that had him, that rostered him yes. in this league. 100% of people furious. I thought he'd be a fantasy MVP for people last year. That was a swing and a miss despite 247 carries. He was a disaster for fantasy owners. And that's why you you, you still draft Sony Michelle. You're just not in an early round or a, a mid to – in a single-digit round, I'm not drafting Sony Michelle, but – you. Doesn't you, Lamar Miller just make it more annoying overall? Again, let, let's see Lamar Miller make the team first for a guy to show up and just, like, he's still on the pup. If Damian Harris is actually showing out, why are they? Why would they roster all uh, Sony, Well, they're not going to keep all four of them. Yeah, that, that's what I mean. And, and Right now, Lamar Miller is the odd man out. A.J. Green expected to return to practice. All right. As is John Ross, worth noting that they're getting their complete wide receiving core available. Hopefully, A.J. Green could stay at practice. Yeah, T. Higgins' camp talk has been very, very positive. Anthony Lynn said Mike Williams, wide receiver for the Los Angeles Chargers, could miss the team's season mm -hmm. opener with the shoulder injury. Now, we the hard knocks bump, we talk about it every year because somebody ends up getting it. You, It's just human nature. It's on video. You see a player dominating. You you fall in love with this player and his personality. There is a player who we're already in love with, and that is Keenan Allen. He's my wide receiver one now, Mike. If if you watched Hard Knocks last night and you you saw Keenan Allen just leaving Chris Harris in shambles He's on so some of these good. routes, Mike Williams missing some games. And honestly, we we don't know the extent now. It, we know the collarbone is fine, but. Mike Williams from the 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 fantasy doctors on Twitter, like there is a huge range of outcomes of how long Mike Williams is actually going to be out with this shoulder injury. Let me it's, redirect the conversation. Okay. A little bit. Are we we have not said this name aloud? Hunter Henry. I sure. mean Mike Williams. You you talk about what Mike Williams brings to an offense. You you he's a big boy. Yes, he's and, the, he is I the nine-route field-stretching wide receiver. And a, and a red zone threat. A, yep. uh, you know, go up and win the 50-50 ball. You know, Keenan Allen is going to get targets. What they represent with Tyrod Taylor, I'm not sure. We've had examples of lots of great wide receivers that have had bad situations. 
Odell Beckham comes to mind last year. Just didn't work out with Baker. We've talked about Larry Fitzgerald in the past with bad quarterback play. I'm not trying to throw shade all over Tyrod Taylor. I think he's okay. But Hunter Henry's sitting yes. there able to potentially represent more of a value in drafts than Keenan might even represent. I was completely off of Hunter Henry uh, before Mike Williams was, was going to miss time. So, yes, I agree that uh, Henry is – far more interesting now and he's he would be the biggest benefactor uh of mike williams missing time jerry you i feel like you've kind of still been in on hunter henry i'm in on hunter henry as far as being the next tier of tight end and, and being worth it i'm out on hunter henry as far as actually drafting him because where he's going in a draft i just don't draft sixth seventh round well just tight ends. He just said he's going in the ninth in the ninth, sure. In the ninth, okay. if if that's actually where he falls to come real drafts, I would I would grab Hunter Henry in the ninth for sure. I I like that value. I'm just not I've found in the drafts I've been doing, it's around the middle of the seventh round where I go from players that I think are good and have some kind of known commodity to dart throws where I think the probability of your pick mattering by the end of the season and looking back is is very low. And so at that point I need to be past that point to take a, a tight end. Are we foolish to ignore the Austin Hoopers and Hunter Henrys in favor of some of these upside tight ends, the Fance, the Jonu, the Hurst, the Herndons? Well, I mean, I... Because those guys seem more exciting because we've seen the other ones play a little bit. And, uh, you know, I, I, I have Hunter Henry ranked above those other guys, and it's really just a matter of where you are in your draft. If you can get Hunter Henry in those late near double-digit rounds... Because that's where I've been getting, you know, Hayden Hurst or, mm -hmm. or or Noah Fant. But I would take Hunter Henry there. But I would rather have Hurst in the ninth or tenth than Hunter Henry in the sixth or seventh. Okay, all right. Uh, we have news that Chris Hogan is uh, working exclusively with the first team offense. <laughs> that's not a good sign. No. Uh, they no. have just renamed the first team offense the second team offense. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> Uh, that's not a good sign for the depth chart. I mean, he was just signed. Yeah, when dude off street <laughs> goes and runs with the ones, you are in some trouble. And and he's <laughs> Brooks look, he's, is typing to me wide receiver for the Jets. Because, oh yes, thank, and that's a good point because yes. you might not know where Hogan is. These thank days. you, thank you, Brooks. Or who Hogan is <laughs> at all? Look, the New York Jets have been hit by injuries. Uh, it, their big free agent pickup, Rashad Perryman, has been dealing with an injury. Their second-round rookie wide receiver pick, Denzel Mims, has been dealing with a hamstring injury. Robbie Anderson, who had that role last year, has left the team. Yeah, so th there are they're up against it. Once once people are healthy, I don't think Chris Hogan is running with the ones, but this is... And this is why we like Chris Herndon as a yes. sleeper tight end, because yes. he has the opportunity to go from a late-round pick to... One of the leaders in targets. Like 70 reception, 80 reception potential for exactly. Chris Herndon. Uh, Dirk Cutter expects a minimum of 15 touches for Todd Gurley. Well, that's good because you paid him to be your starting running back. So is I'll that news you, to you? It, well, yeah. I mean, I, I think it is news. It's coach speak. So you have to decide, do you believe it or not? Uh, when I statted my guys out this year, I, I was surprised by how much I was in on Gurley. And that was based on... Eno Smith and Brian Hill, I don't think are good and not, not good enough to really take over. In which case, uh, you know, it's the Todd Gurley show. He's a one-year contract for a coach who has to win or get out. I think they're going to use him. And, and Mike, you've brought up some stats that make you question. Okay. Well, they used Devonta Freeman. He wasn't any good. Maybe they're just going to use Todd Gurley. He's not any good. And the same thing you could say, like last year, Todd Gurley was, uh, he averaged 17 touches a game so he was in that range and it and it took 14 touchdowns just to turn him into the running the uh the running back 14 is Todd Gurley gonna get 14 touchdowns with the Atlanta Falcons well I mean we we've talked about this a reception is worth so much more than a carry no he's not uh, and so if <laughs> thank you Andy if you're talking I'm about sidestepping the questions over here I'm not sidestepping the questions you answer can't, the question <laughs> he's not gonna get 14 touchdowns but if his total touches are far more in the reception side than in the carry side. That's going to make up some ground. And then the nice thing is I've seen Gurley drop. People don't want him now. 
He's dropping. I've you know if if you can get girly, you, my, Mike's work here is done. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you have you, you have. Where have you seen him dropping to? I want to I want to know if I'm in on this. Fifth round is the latest I've seen. Now that was in a much more casual league okay, where quarterbacks round. are going to go higher. But let's say you know late fourth round. No, not fourth. I'm not in fifth. I'm probably not in. Gurley, David Montgomery, Jason, to close this conversation. I would out. take Todd Gurley. All right. Before we move on to the sleepers, I want to thank today's sponsor, Simply Safe. Ladies and gentlemen, you have heard us talking about Simply Safe for many, many moons. You have heard us singing the praises because they are the security system. They keep you safe and they cut out. The crap. They've got everything you need to protect your home. None of the drawbacks of traditional home security. You're like you get an arsenal of sensors, cameras. You can blanket every window, every door. It's tailored to your home. Professional monitoring keeps watch day and night, ready to send help. Whatever the emergency is, they are ready to send that help. And you get to set it up yourself in just under an hour. You peel and you stick the sensors where you need them. No technician is required. And no contract, no pushy salespeople. This is the best part of Simply Safe. You're not going to get trapped. They stand by their product. And all of this starts at $15 a month. We keep our studio safe with Simply Safe. We have trusted them with our gear and our livelihood for many years. You got to check them out. Try Simply Safe today at simplysafe.com slash footballers. You get free shipping. You get a 60-day risk-free trial. There's nothing to lose. That's simplysafe.com slash footballers. We also have a special message for you from NHTSA. Everyone knows about the risks of driving drunk. You can get into a crash. You can get hurt, killed. But let's take a look, uh, a look at some surprising statistics. Almost 29 people in the United States die every day in alcohol-impaired vehicle crashes. It's one person every 50 minutes. Even though drunk driving fatalities have fallen by a third in the last three decades, drunk driving crashes still claim more than 10,000 lives per year, and it can have a big impact on your wallet and get arrested, incur huge legal expenses, maybe even lose your job. So what can you do to prevent drunk driving? You can plan a safe ride home before you start drinking. You can designate a sober driver or call a taxi. If someone you know has been drinking, take their keys and arrange for them to get a sober ride home. We all know the consequences of driving drunk, but one thing is for sure, you're wrong if you think it's no big deal. Drive sober or get pulled over. Sleepers. All right, we did a breakout show yesterday. Today we're talking about sleepers, and uh, we did a early sleeper pick show back on the 23rd of June. I want to see where you guys sit with the players that you brought up then. Mike, you talked about Randall Cobb. Do you still view him as a sleeper? 100%. Uh, I I have shifted that. I do believe Will Fuller will be the the breakout wide receiver from this team. But like uh, like I was saying, you, you need to leave margin. You need to leave uh, room for a range of outcomes. And we simply don't know what's going to happen with the passing game for the Houston Texans. And people want Fuller. People want to draft Cooks. But Randall Cobb could see a whole bunch of targets uh, as the slot wide receiver. I realized yesterday we were in the middle of a family draft. Uh, I tweeted the first eight rounds, uh, Jason and my team. Like our kids are in it. Uh, our wives are playing. It's been really fun. Um, I didn't get Will Fuller in the eighth round, and I was devastated. <laughs> I found out that I'm in love with Will Fuller this you year. You guys are certainly on, on that side. You have both developed into uh, believers, and you're seeking him out in drafts, drafting him or being sad that he's drafted. I still believe Brandon Cooks is the wide receiver to own. And I feel like we need some sort of... The roster. Uh, so, yes, uh, some sort of um, bet, some water bet. Brandon Cooks v. Will Fuller. Yeah, th how about that? Yeah, that's it. Okay. Fancy finish. Mike, you want in on the Will Fuller side? Two for one. Heck Come on. yes. Water bet. It's been a while. We haven't had a water bet in a while. Hey, you're welcome. Yeah. The last one might have been the J.K. Dobbins Gus Edwards bet we made. <laughs> oh, that was that's a hot bet. What's that? The first four weeks, <laughs> touches or something like that? That is correct. We, Go Dobbins. Yeah, we only deal with the big names here on the show. <laughs> Jason, in the early sleeper show, you you brought up Boston Scott. 
still believe Boston Scott's a sleeper. Great Scott. I certainly do. Running back for the Philadelphia Eagles while I think Miles Sanders is a very, very good pick, great assuming he's healthy. Great Scott. I think Great Scott is going to be fantastic because he's a he's a PPR guy. You know, we brought up James White in the beginning. Uh, Chris, uh, you know, Carson Wentz will absolutely use Boston Scott at the end of the last year. Boston Scott was really valuable. Now, that came when there were no other wide receivers and the health of the pass catchers was a, a giant question mark. But he broke out and he has full stranglehold on the number two running back position, which is part of why I like Miles Sanders so much, because it's not like Boston Scott. I mean, if you don't know who Boston Scott is, you got to look hard. You can miss him. He is not a big guy out he's there. He's a Darren Sproles he, guy. Exactly right. So he's not going to just take, oh, you know, he's not Jordan Howard. He's not going to be splitting carries with Miles Sanders. But I do think in a PPR league, Boston Scott is a good name to know. He averaged, well, once he finally like took that backup mm -hmm. job over those final four weeks, he was averaging, you know, just over six targets a game. So it's, he's interesting. I want you to know something, Jason. I agree with you. Oh, fantastic. It's finally happened. Uh, I had Michael Pittman Jr., rookie wide receiver for the Indianapolis Colts on the 623 show. I will say that mm, I have like three players in Indianapolis yeah. that I believe are sleepers. Michael Pittman, um, Paris Campbell, mm -hmm. and Naeem Hines. Like I think all three of them are very interesting. And so I would say that I've I guess I've cooled on Michael Pittman at, in terms of carving him out above Paris Campbell. I think Paris Campbell's skill set might fit what Philip Rivers does, um, you know, pretty well. So if you made me choose between those two guys right now, it's almost a coin flip for me, and I'd probably choose Paris Campbell. So, sure. yeah. I would still choose Michael Pittman out of those two, but sure. you, the, the Paris Campbell uh, hype uh, it has certainly brought some doubt to Michael Pittman as a rookie wide receiver breaking out this season. All right. I'm really excited about each of our individual sleeper picks on the show today. We have gone a little bit deeper with these three yeah. picks, trying to bring you some names that maybe you have literally not heard of that could have an interesting role this season. But they're pretty deep. Mm -hmm. And um, I wanted to bring forward a couple of our UDK sleeper picks as well. We have sleepers, breakouts, bus values in the ultimate draft kit. And so these are our kind of more consensus three names, and then we'll bring our kind of individual three names. The first one we're talking about because, look, if, if there's one camp situation that everyone's paying attention to, it's Antonio Gibson, <laughs> running back, wide receiver, <laughs> hybrid, weapon, uh, for the Washington football team, yes. third round draft pick, Mike is good, good. living in a sea of emotion <laughs> with Antonio Gibson. I look, I've got, I've got Twitter search for Antonio Gibson. I got this thing on refresh like every three seconds. Well, yeah, you are I need all the Gibson news. You are hype maximum. Yes, but Antonio Gibson is one of the names that I think we all agree is a sleeper pick. Like regardless of how you see the season the range of outcomes, which I think are vast for Antonio Gibson. He could Absolutely. be a player that goes from predominantly a special teams weapon mm -hmm. to all the way, because of the depth chart in, in Washington, all the way to like the most valuable fantasy asset on the team. And I do mean that. Like That is a possibility. Yes. Uh, explosive player, multifaceted skill set, great wide receiver, it's but a rookie. Yeah, I mean, it's in Mike's contract. We had to bring his name up on the sleeper show. Well, like, um, it's like okay, the if you want to get into athletic profiles, everyone uh, fell over themselves once they once they saw what Jonathan Taylor did at the combine. He, like I said on yesterday's show, the 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 comp for Jonathan Taylor is the Hulk. Antonio Gibson is was step for step with Jonathan Taylor. He is a gigantic man for a running back. Six foot, almost two hundred thirty pounds, and ran a sub four four forty. What was he Darren is, McFadden's size? Because that's what he kind of reminds me of in, uh, term, uh, in terms of stature. Yeah, you you can. I I don't know off the top of my head. He was oh, okay. McFadden was even bigger, six two two ten. But two, two but you're ten? talking about a tall a taller running back. Yeah, Antonio Gibson is, is two hundred twenty eight. Yeah, pounds. so much stouter than Darren. But you McFadden. said six foot, right? Yeah. Okay. So sure. here's the deal. Here's why I love Antonio Gibson. The the situation in Washington in the backfield is completely unknown. 
the skill set for Antonio Gibson is they honestly it, it wasn't known what position he was going to play in the NFL when he was drafted. Yeah, they it was okay. We're drafting him as a running back, but we didn't know. Like, you had to follow the news to know. Okay, what position are they actually going to put him at? And they decided to go with running back. If you go and look look at his college production, it is absolutely insanity. This the guy scored a, a touchdown like every fifth time he touched the ball. He is running with the ones. It, so he's, I, he's I, doing different things with the ones. Too. Yeah, but, but I'm saying he's playing with the first team. He's catching the ball. He's running. I want to check in with with you, Andy, with with the the drumbeat that has happened for Antonio Gibson. I don't mind at all people taking a a late round shot on Bryce Love. Have you changed? Uh, your your stance? Are you still more of you're looking to draft Bryce Love? Here, here's what I believe. I believe Antonio Gibson will receive 25% of the running back snaps in Washington. Okay. And then take that for what you will, what you believe about his involvement, role, explosive plays. I think he'll, he'll get about 25% of the snaps over the course of the year. I think Adrian Peterson will be in the 40% range. I think J.D. McKissick will be in the 20% range. And I think Bryce Love and mostly Antonio Gibson fill up the rest. What do you believe about the offense? What do you believe about predictabi predictability on the, that snap count? There you go. So I think that, uh, you know, when you have Adrian Peterson in front of you, who's older, uh, you have an opportunity. I don't know if this team, Ron Rivera, the way he talks about Adrian Peterson, you, you look at the example that Adrian Peterson has been around camp. Adrian Peterson's yards per carry went up year to year in Washington the last two years. I don't think that we, you know, Rivera's not looking through our lens. He's looking through the lens of, of the example of Adrian Peterson and what he's done. So I don't know if, uh, I don't know if the season goes really bad, let's put it this way. Okay. If they're a terrible team through the first eight to 10 weeks, that back half of the year could be gold for Antonio Gibson. Okay. Jason, I, I see you kind of, Thinking, sitting, shifting in your seat shifting, a little bit, I, disagreeing. Well, I was, I was unsure where hating, you were going to land. Hating, despising, because, <laughs> because, sadness, because I, fury. I, I actually think uh, I, you had me in a lot of what you were saying. But I think if the season goes really bad, very, very poorly, they might just run, <laughs> you know, th through Adrian Peterson and 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 keep going. It, I think if if their offense starts clicking and things start working and, and they get explosive plays from Terry McLaurin, they might try to get Gibson more and more involved and, and open things up and not be a conservative team. If, if they're wanting to be conservative, that's where I think they'll run Adrian Peterson. And um, Well, I mean, it's just my logic of they're going to start the season. Adrian Peterson's the starter. He's going to get the majority of the work. So they're either going to succeed with that recipe or if they fail, then they shift and they look more towards the future. We talk a lot about my my kind of thought that there are no teams that are actually looking to the future in the NFL. They're not it's not like the NBA where you come out and you're like, "Man, we're definitely competing for the uh, trust the process." Right. Yeah, trust the process. It's mostly coaches that don't want to get fired that year. And there are a couple of teams and you brought them up, Jacksonville, Carolina, and Washington in particular that look like it is a process. It's going to be more than one year. But I just believe Ron Rivera really likes Adrian Peterson. And so that concerns me with the upside. It's tough because he loves all of them. <laughs> oh, Ron, yes. Ron, every every player on the roster is a full three down back. Ron Rivera is, is not helping Do you believe he us. loves J.D. McKissick? I believe that he likes him. Yeah. I don't I, know. The, this is the fun part of fantasy. Yeah. I mean, these are he's a sleeper because his upside is Mike dancing in the streets for 14 of the 16 weeks this year. Look, guys. I don't even know if, what we're gonna do with you. If we, I won't. I won't be here. I will have ascended. You I will, will have. I will turn into light, and I, my physical being will no longer be a part of this planet. I, I just cannot imagine. I don't know what our CGI capabilities <laughs> are back there, Al Borland, Judge Giamatti. <laughs> But if in week one, Antonio Gibson has like two long touchdown plays, I want to see if we can make Mike look like John Travolta from that Angel movie or something. I want him glowing on the other side of this screen. Powder. There, no CGI necessary, Mike. Yeah, friend. I guess that's true. We don't need to do anything. Mike will come in just an aura. Uh, yes. Two other names from the UDK. Chris Thompson, running back in Jacksonville. Mm -hmm. uh, he reunites with Jay Gruden, who had him in Washington. Ironically, 
Chris Thompson was kind of this role that we kind of see Antonio Gibson being in Washington, which is third down, explosive, big chunk play guy, tons of targets for Chris Thompson throughout his career in Washington, mm -hmm. also tons of injuries. Yeah. But we had Leonard Fournette be this first, second, third down back in Jacksonville, and here's Chris Thompson. Do you believe he takes the majority of the work on third down? Yeah, I, I think he's coming in to be the third down specialist, the pass catching back. And, you know, Leonard Fournette had 100 plus targets last year. They, they throw to the running back. Minshew will uh, dump it down, and, and they brought someone who's better at that skill. Uh, you know, I talked about believing in Boston Scott as that PPR uh, third down option. Chris Thompson is better than Boston Scott. Chris he's Thompson, a, James White, Boston Scott is the Based order on, I would put them. Okay. Hmm. Would you? Personally. Wow. Chris Thompson, okay. James White, Boston Scott. And is that considering draft position as well? well? E yes. I'm saying at where that's the order that I would draft those people because of where they are in the draft. So you, I, you're pretty bullish on Mr. Chris Thompson, which makes sense. He's our UDK sleeper. Well, yeah. Just, <laughs> I just uh, when yeah, I He's look, a very good player. If he's healthy, he's going to be relevant for fantasy. And maybe you only get five or six weeks and then he – pull something or break something, unfortunately, because that's been the history. But I'm f I'm fine. When he's out there, I think he's going to be catching the ball a lot. Here's what I like about Chris Thompson is if you look back on his past three years, he is solid for fantasy in those first games, and then the injury happens. And even if when he comes back, he's still not at full strength. But those first few weeks while he's healthy, like you said, last year, people may not remember – Three of or two of the first three weeks, he was a top twenty running back for fantasy in Washington. Who they were bad la last year. <laughs> Breaking. <laughs> Perhaps you don't remember that part. Chris Thompson is the perfect player to draft late, uh, and then if he hits on week one, maybe we even want to wait till week two. You trade him because somebody, uh, maybe even the person who drafted Leonard Fournette's like, oh crap. I need to get this backfield completely shored up, and I got to draft for Chris Thompson. He is the perfect player that you draft him late and will be able to uh, have trade value just a couple weeks into the season. Now, Jason, you're taking a Rule 34 approach to Chris Thompson when he's out there, when he's available. You're st you're willing to play him. Yes, if he is healthy, he should be good. I don't ex expect him to necessarily stay healthy but the nice thing and the reason that I put him first is not because I he's not going to be better than James White on the season I don't expect that but Chris Thompson is absolutely free undrafted in many leagues he's costing you nothing and to start the season you'll have an asset that can be used or traded all right one more UDK sleeper before we bring our individual kind of deep sleeper picks here Alan Lazard wide receiver for yeah. the Green Bay Packers long live the Lazard King yes hail uh, we have Lazard pretty much locked in to be the wide receiver two behind Devontae Adams. If you look back at his game logs last year as he was kind of establishing himself a little bit. Yes. You know, his fantasy relevant weeks were the weeks he scored, but that is something that, you know, Aaron Rodgers, if he likes you, it can end well for you. Yes, this is follow the narrative of what happened last year. Alan Lazard was not a full-time player until about halfway into the season. All the reports were Aaron Rodgers told the staff, I want Lazard out there. Now, I don't know Aaron Rodgers personally, so I cannot confirm nor deny that this actually took place. But we did see that Aaron Rodgers was willing to go to uh, Alan Lazard on very tough throws, and Lazard came through with several highlight plays. They didn't do anything in the draft to address the wide receiver two position, which we thought Green Bay may do. Should. Which, <laughs> fair. Man should have done. Look, it, it, but it spoke to the confidence in Alan Lazard uh, solidifying himself as the wide receiver two. The drumbeat for Lazard has been growing louder and louder over the course of training camp. Does Aaron Rodgers in this offense have enough to sustain two fantasy wide receivers? That remains to be seen. That's the question. That's what makes him a sleeper is is he is the number two wide receiver. I think we're all sure of that. He's but does it matter? Does Aaron Rodgers number right. two wide receiver? And that sounds crazy that it to think it, it doesn't matter. And you know, last year the number two didn't matter, but it was it was split. You know, it, they tried MVS, they tried Alan Lazard. If he's got sixteen games of being the number two, 
hopefully Aaron Rodgers has a good enough season where that matters. There is a chance where it, they're running the ball so much and Devontae Adams is inching towards 200 targets and the wide receiver two doesn't matter. But in general, Alan Lazard is the wide receiver two for a Hall of Fame quarterback who's been good at fantasy for the majority of his career. We only saw a little peak at higher snap count Alan Lazard at the end of the year. The last three games, over 70%. Uh, three targets, but then nine targets and eight targets mm -hmm. the last two weeks. Uh, they won the last five games, but then that disparity of what you're talking about. Does it matter? Well, in week 16, with nine targets, he was the 49th wide receiver on the week. In week 17, he was the 18th wide receiver, where he was very relevant with similar snap counts and targets. So it's not what it was in Green Bay, but Lazard sh pretty much has established himself. I have yes. heard some... Some equanimous St. Brown talk around camp. Sure. Returning from the injury. I mean, he, yeah, he, he didn't play at all last year, unfortunately. All right. Let's move on to our individual sleeper picks oh, here. It's time to get deep. And Mike, Mike, you deep. have a, what I think is a great sleeper selection here. Well, thank you. Uh, this is the name I want to bring up. And this is, this is a very deep sleeper, like we have prefaced. And this is a player who his relevance may just be the first quarter of the season. But I want to highlight Kendrick Bourne, wide receiver from San Francisco. Last year, here were the 49ers target leaders. George Kittle. Okay, he's still there. Yeah, I've heard of him. It's great, and he's a great player. Debo. Yep. When's, oh. when's he going to play? I don't know. Manuel Sanders. He's not going to play He'll for the 49ers. He'll be there week one, but just, yeah, for the Saints. And then Kendrick Bourne. He was number four uh, in targets for the San Francisco 49ers. He's reliable. 76% of his receptions turn into a first down. Uh, they Look, they have, an, very, they have a very easy season or opening schedule for the wide receiver and the quarterback. According to our strength of schedule tool in the Ultimate Draft Kit, they have the number one early season schedule for wide receivers, number three for quarterbacks, and 24th for running backs. Not that I, I'm, I'm not doubting San Francisco's ability to run. Just saying that if you're looking at the schedule, it lines up pretty nicely for San Francisco, San Francisco to get it done through the air. And the biggest thing is, who else is going to do it? Who else is going to catch passes besides George Kittle? I, I mean, those first few weeks, because their first round pick, pick Brandon Ayukin. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, my bad, my bad. Look, I hate that guy. First round pick. If you wonder if we edit the show, First there's your answer. Pick. Look, I was getting too heated. Yeah, no, you're fine, man. Brandon Ayukin. Uh, Poor Brandon has a has a hamstring problem. He was going to be the guy, but now we don't know when he's going to be back. Is it Dante Pettis that he finally returned to good graces? Probably not. But Kendrick Bourne was tied with George Kittle for the team lead in touchdowns for the San Francisco 49ers last year. Over the first couple of weeks, man, I, I do believe Kendrick Bourne can have deep sleeper value. Yeah, I mean, it, Trent Taylor is going to be the dink and dunk guy, but the valuable targets have to go to somebody, and it's got to be seemingly either Kendrick Bourne or Dante Pettis. Right. Maybe he'll you know be that post-hype sleeper, but if last year was any indication when you have the opportunity he did not uh mm -hmm. take a stand no he was their uh second round pick that turned sour so mm -hmm. not good all right andy you want to go or you want me to go i that's up to you mr moore all right i'll hop right in water's warm i like it mm. i'm gonna go because i river. peed in it <laughs> the river uh i'm gonna go with a fourth string wide receiver you know the name because he was electric in moments last year McCall Hardman second year wide receiver for the Kansas City Chiefs and you say what well, he's not a starter you're correct 26 he is, receptions he is he, 26 receptions his rookie year and now he is the fourth string not a starter for the Chiefs and I would take him rather than Sammy Watkins rather than Demarcus Robinson mm. and here's my rationale why first of all the dude is electric fast. Not fast. He's four three three. He's not sub four. He's he crushed sub four. Four three three speed. And he laughs at sub four four. Yeah, people are like that's he goes that's disrespectful to call me sub four four. 
Um, the, the thing is, is not everybody translates speed on the field, but when he was on the field last year, he was actually super fast and uncatchable. You saw that time and time. There's a reason why he, half of his games, uh, half of his games, eight of 16, he was a top 36 wide receiver. And if you look at how many opportunities he got there, like you said, Andy, 26 receptions on the season. Because, you know, when he touches the ball. He was one touch man. One touch! Yes, he was. He is a very uh, exciting prospect. But now he's coming into year two. And he's been working on his intermediate routes. I watched a whole camp. He, he was mic'd up in camp one week, and he is very and much involved. Did it sound like this? <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. They need to put a better wind guard <laughs> on that mic. Um, Sammy Watkins has already missed some time in camp, and that alone allows Michael Hardman to have the opportunity to run with the ones, to show Andy Reid and Pat Mahomes, oh, this guy might be better for our offense. We know Andy Reid will go with whoever is better, right? I mean, it's superstar, mm -hmm. possibly Hall of Fame, LaShawn McCoy. It, it, he wasn't better for their team last year, and, and Andy Reid was kind enough to give him rest days, if you remember. <laughs> He's, uh, he just wanted to save him up. Yeah, he, I mean, he was even kind enough to rest him during the Super Bowl. Right, he wanted to save him up for... You know, for his, his, whatever, for his whatever next comes year. next for his next team. But my my point is this. I believe McCall Hardman could and will play his way into a starter in front of either Demarcus Robinson or Sammy Watkins. That is without injury. But it only takes one injury. And it can be to any of those three guys. If Tyreek Hill got injured, if Sammy Watkins gets injured, which he has done many times, or Demarcus Robinson gets injured he will have the opportunity to go out there and dominate. Uh, Tyree Kill's rookie year, 593 receiving yards. McCole Hardman, rookie year, 538 receiving yards. They're very similar archetype. I think a year two leap as an actual wide receiver. His route, his getting off press, he, he was he was he didn't have a lot of college production. He came in No, we very were surprised raw. with the pick. I mean, he came in as a speedster End of sentence. I mean that right. we didn't we expected maybe they would go a different route last year in the draft, but they knew what they wanted. You had the Tyree Kill, will he be back situation last offseason. But he was drafted almost to replace Tyree Kill if Tyreek didn't come back. Yeah, and and my I if he if he takes that terrible job from quarterback Sammy, though, he is just an awful quarterback. Sammy situation. Watkins had ninety Patrick Mahomes targets. Let that sink in. He only had one good week. On oh. 90 Patrick Mahomes targets. Let McCall Hardman get in there and get 90 targets, and you're going to have a really good fantasy option, and there's multiple ways that it could come, either playing in front or injury ahead of him. Okay, I'm going to go deeper. I mean, it's our job here on the show Oof. to mm. wade through the camp hype. What do we believe? What don't we believe? The you know, And we know our local camp may be mm. a little bit better than others. Outside of DeAndre Hopkins arriving in Arizona, there's been no pass catcher that has more buzz than mm. this guy. Look, don't mess around. Mm. In training camp. He delivers yes, on he does. Sundays <laughs> and in the red zone. It's Dan Arnold. That's what you get when you mess with the buzz, man. Dan Arnold is a legit sleeper candidate this year. And if you didn't, if you weren't paying attention, he showed you why at the very, very end of last season. He had four. Which, sorry, Andy, to cut you off here, but this is a this is a tip that we give everybody every year. Especially Jason, you really highlight this. Make sure you are paying attention at the end of the season. Stick with the show. Uh, look, rain, sun, rain or shine, you need to know what happens at the end of the season because guys like Dan Arnold show up and show out for the last four weeks, and don't really make a ton of buzz, but you need to know what has happened. Dan Arnold is 6'6", 222. Explosive, monster, Me too. monster vertical, monster broad jump, uh, red zone weapon. Kyler Murray is in love with what Dan Arnold brings to the offense. He said, I've never had a guy that big that can do what he can do. It's pretty nice. Cliff says that they're hoping to build around Dan Arnold as that feature tight end. Max Williams is banged up. The end of the year that Mike talked about, he had four receptions for 76 yards and a score in the season finale. He scored in two of the last three out, um, outings with Arizona. Seam routes, these routes that we saw 
Kyler, uh, you know, with the time that he can buy in the pocket, with the weapons that you now have in DeAndre Hopkins, a healthy Christian Kirk, nobody's talking about Dan Arnold, but this is a powerful offense, and he is going to be featured in it. And that is what I that's what I believe makes for a great sleeper. I mean, you mm-hmm. have somebody that's going to be featured that no one knows about, um, that has tremendous upside. So I think that this is a player that, you know, we we've joked about him a few times on the show, but that that has gone from comedy to mm-hmm. reality yes. when you talk about a very I mean, he's completely free in drafts. If you want him with your last pick, we've done that for three or four months. Oh here. yeah. If your draft is already done. You can still get him. Just go yeah, to he's your on the waiver, waiver wire. <laughs> yeah, and, so. and like he is a a great name that I believe needs to be mentioned. Because maybe maybe you don't want to draft the post man. I get it. You're going to take your shot on somebody else. But week one, if Dan Arnold shows out, buy in, believe, right. Like believe right. believe what has happened and go go get him off the waiver wire. Yeah, he's he's a very fast, very large. Uh, weapon in this offense, and he he flashed. If you don't know Dan Arnold, he flashed with Drew Brees uh, a couple of years ago. Mm-hmm. The Cardinals picked him up at the end of last season, but like I said, Max Williams is dealing with an unspecified injury in camp. Arnold's getting mm-hmm. all of the opportunities, and uh, he is a pass catching tight end. Yes, that is his role in that offense. So, Kendrick Bourne, McCall Hardman, Dan Arnold added mm-hmm. to the list on today's episode. Um, that'll do it for the fantasy footballers podcast. Uh, what do we have coming up tomorrow, Brooksy? We got bus and values. Oh yeah. A little bit, a Double little bit tip. of sour, a little bit of sweet. <laughs> Is that what you're saying? Yep. Oh yeah. And what, what about the rest of the week? What do we got going on? We're mocking on Friday. Oh! Final, final mock final draft before mock the on season. The show. Yep. Getting you everybody guys, ready. Did you guys see that stadium on hard knocks? Oh Whew. my, it is, it is beautiful. That is awesome <laughs> yeah that was that was pretty incredible keenan allen number one overall pick yeah, after say, that, that stadium looked almost as good as <laughs> keenan allen <laughs> thank you for tuning in everybody thank you for supporting the podcast we will see you tomorrow stay safe goodbye Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. In Foot Clan, don't forget Simply Safe's got everything you need to protect your home with none of the drawbacks of traditional home security. You can set it up yourself in under an hour. There's no contract, no pushy sales guy, no hidden fees, no fine print. All of it starts at $15 a month. Try Simply Safe today at simplysafe.com slash footballers. You get free shipping and a 60-day risk-free trial. There's nothing to lose.